Typing, Sam's there. Good. So I'm not all alone. <sighs> never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, folks. Um, no, this isn't a picture from today. This is a picture from a couple days ago. Uh, and I don't know if you recognize this building over here, um, but that's the Loyola High Rise, <clears throat> the observatory up on top. And this is looking across from um fleming park uh the dingle tower so looking across the northwest arm this was a couple of days ago and uh the uh, late in the afternoon we yeah i think it was it may have been monday um we had these absolutely massive clouds they hung very very low but they were very very tall clouds and uh um ones that were off uh, further to the north, this is looking somewhat south. Um, they look like uh, these these uh, movies of alien invasions where there's this giant spaceship that comes and hovers over the whole city and the whole city becomes dark because it's so big. Well, these clouds look like that. They look like they were shaped like giant spaceships. Um, very eerie, strange afternoon. Anyway, uh, explosion pictures yeah they, they were very peculiar clouds uh i just didn't recall seeing ones quite like that in quite some time but uh they uh so those of you that aren't in halifax that i know we had a picture uh two weeks ago three weeks ago that was looking down at saint mary's from the field uh this is about the closest i've been to saint mary's uh in uh, since august <laughs> I'm staying away. Anyway, so um, I've got a whole PowerPoint, but the class that I just finished, and we finished it late, we never started the PowerPoint. That uh, I, if you were here on Monday, I promised on Monday I'd look at assignment four, and uh, that was because the one o'clock or the eleven thirty class had asked me last Monday. Um, they were having challenges with assignment four, and part of it was the language I was using and confusion they had. And so I promised you guys I'd do the same thing like I did with assignment three. And uh, so that's what I plan on doing, uh, unless you would like me to do something else. Um, but, uh, let me just go back, though. I've got to go and clean out all the stuff we just did. Um, so if you'll give me a second, because we ran over, I didn't have time in between to do cleanup. But we went through the assignment and did a variety of different things here. Uh, does anybody want me to do the assignment? Or, um, I don't know where you stand on it. Hopefully some of you tried it. Yes, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. It's um, unfortunately some of my assignments are very confusing, and I, I apologize for that. I I think of things that I want you to be able to do, but uh, the uh, let me close this because I've got so many things that I've typed into it, and I'll re just reopen it again. But um, different people had different issues to do with the assignment. Uh, hopefully this comes up nice and clean. There we go. And uh, yeah. I am recording this and I'm going to post it. I'm just trying to make sure that we've got everything here that you need to see. So we'll get the questions. 
and right up there like that. Okay, so we'll walk through the whole thing. Okay, we're going to go and start at the beginning. And uh, um, if you would um, ask me questions as we go. The other class, we went, one of the things I think we did about three or four times, we just kept going back and, and that, you know, missed it, missed it. Do it again, do it again, do it again. And because uh, it's just so easy with the Excel stuff to, you think you got it, but you didn't. And many of the students were doing the assignment uh, as we walked through it. So anything I did, they were trying to do in Excel at the same time. And a variety of them were getting error messages. So uh, I'd recommend you open the data file in Excel. I'll have the questions here. Uh, you may even want to open your questions at the same time and paste in answers as you go. Because <laughs> um, uh, I'm going to do some of that. I'll, I'll be pasting in some things and, and showing what happens when we do. And uh, some of the crazy things didn't happen with the class, uh, but we did get some things that we were surprised at. It just Excel and Word and how things function, it's always challenging. So let me go back and first look at the data file itself and give you a bit of explanation of what I did to your data file. So this was the stuff from assignment two. Uh, it's the same data set and that I only picked out a few variables. So I wanted, were you the class of 2019 or 2020? I included gender, though in the end we didn't use it in the, in the assignment. Uh, I included your home, which you had in assignment two, you used that. Uh, high school average, I thought I was going to use, but in the end didn't. But um, uh, I thought we'd well, look at that along the way. Age, uh, we didn't look at in that assignment, but um, that it is something because I want to do some regression. But some of the things that we, uh, that particularly the international uh, students versus domestic and the 2019 versus 2020, uh, we looked at summer earnings and how they differed. So you were just using a pivot table. There's a lot of garbage in that table. And along the way, we did filter out some extreme values and uh, it helped us with the analysis in that. With regression, when we're going and doing analyses, regression does not like missing values. Blanks cause us problems that, in fact, it won't work. You'll get error messages if you've got a blank, because Excel will treat that blank as being text, and it's trying to do arithmetic on text. That doesn't happen generally with pivot tables and with some of the descriptive statistics, if you were using them, the, uh, histograms, uh, they'll often just sort of skip over them. But when you're doing regression and correlation, there's a lot of calculations going on behind the scenes. And with a blank, it doesn't know what to do with it. So what I did was with student records that had a lot of blanks in them for these variables, I just threw them out. Uh, but if there was only you know, a couple blanks, you know, one blank with a student's record. With some of them, I went and just guessed what it would be. And so maybe their high school average, they didn't give it to me. The average of all the students in this data set, I think was around 78 or something like that. And so I just put that number in and presumed the student was a, an average student. Um, in terms of where they were from, uh, with a number of them, I guess, they're probably Nova Scotia, since that made up the largest group of students. With summer earnings, if it was blank, I left that one out. But I did go and take, there was one that was $650,000, and I made that $6,500, because it was just silly. It's, it's a crazy number. And I did uh, modify a couple other ones that I thought were probably incorrect outliers. 
Um, and ones that were really, really low, uh, like uh, probably, you know, I kept some of them. The 340 I kept, but there was numbers under 100 or under 200 I threw out. I don't know. Maybe this 400 should be 4,000. Maybe that should be 5,000. Maybe this should be 3,400. I don't know. Uh, and I'm just leaving them the way they are. So in the end, I ended up with 179 students that I still had data on. And that's what your data file is at the moment. So, um, and so I cleaned up that for you. The other thing, Excel is going to require us to have the columns together. Uh, so at the start, we're doing correlation, and I'm going to have you do it with these things all together. Oh, yeah. The other thing I did was I turned words into numbers. So South Asia is an international student, so it gets a one here for international. It gets a zero, though, for Canada. Um, and this is Canada outside Nova Scotia. Um, and there's a student from Africa, same way. And if I scroll down here a ways, here's a student that was Canada outside Nova Scotia. So is not international, but has a one here for being Canada. So I'm coding these as binary. Uh, this is a variable that had uh, many different values, and I've reduced it down to being in the international group or you're being in the Canada outside Nova Scotia group. And if you're not in either of those, that, so if you're, here's a student that zero for international, zero for Canada, because the student is Nova Scotia. So that's how they're coded in there. Um, that with some of the others, I've coded gender as being zero or one. So here's a, a female, that's a one. Here's a male, that's a zero. And the class, I know it's a number, but it's really a label. It's a, it's a name of a year. Um, and so with 2020, I call that one. And 2019, I call that a zero. So it's all been recoded as numbers because regression and correlation are all based around studying numbers. These are odd numbers, zero or one. If you can remember when I introduced classification, the first thing we did was try to build a discriminant function. Or no, we tried to build a probability model, excuse me, that uh, we had uh, employees classified as good or bad. If they were good, they were one. If they're bad, they were zero. And then we looked at test scores we had about them. And we built a regression model to try to predict, are they a zero or a one? So if you're looking at relationships between one variable that's binary, zero and one, and one that's numeric, if you recall the graphs we get, we had one bunch that were all the zero people and what their test scores were. And then we had the good employees, the one bunch, and their test scores. So it was like two strips of numbers. Uh, because they're numbers, we can still do calculations, though they may be silly numbers. Uh, uh, so I could go and find correlation among these things, even though with these guys, I shouldn't expect an awful lot because they're just zero or one. Don't expect to get a really, really high correlation. Um, that So that's what it asked for in the assignment. It said, do the correlations. So if you recall in Excel to do data analysis, I go to data, I go to data analysis, I want correlation, okay. It asks, where is the data? Now, oops, I got this in here because of last class. There in column E, row one, down to column K, row 180. So I'm going to go E1 to K180. If my data is in columns, I've got labels in my first row, and I'm going to put it into a new worksheet. And I get this. Let me make it bigger so we can see it. Okay, 
so that each of these numbers represents, again, correlation between, some of them are, if I was looking at two numbers, you know, here's high school average and age. It says that as age goes up, high school average goes down. Uh, oh, raised hand, Matt. You raised a hand, do you have a question? Just type in your question. I'll try to. Uh, can you record for reference? Yeah, the whole thing is being, uh, I'm making a video of it. And uh, later this afternoon, I'll upload that video. Okay, and I've got to do it for the uh, A section that finished. They had their own video. And that's why I do like I did with assignment three. I uploaded three videos for it, one for each of the sections because it's in reference as well to the questions you're posing and uh, so it may be there are different questions in different sections so, um, so this one it's a correlation it's negative it says that high school average seems to be lower for older students so that's going downhill um, that if I looked at this one it says um, summer earnings <laughs> It's negative. It's a tiny number, but it's negative. So let's first look at the negative versus positive. And negative means things go down. So it says um, that students with, uh, and I don't know which comes first. Is it their summer earnings or their high school average? But I could say, because this is connecting those two together, that the smarter you are, the less you earn. <laughs> So students with really high grades in high school, they didn't earn very much last summer. But notice how small these numbers are. This is very close to zero, meaning that there's not a very strong relationship. Um, that uh, this one, it's bigger in absolute terms, but it's still not a really strong relationship. That if I looked at this one, it says uh, grades for women are probably somewhat higher than they are for men. And that's actually more often true. At least I know their university grades are generally higher for women than for men. Um, that uh, this says that the students in 2020 said they did better in high school than the uh, class of 2019 set. Uh, so we got a bunch of different things. This says that international students said their grades were lower doesn't mean they're not as good students, um, that at least in some countries, they've got really tough grading standards. So to get an 80 in some countries is almost impossible. Uh, so they're, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a different grading system and maybe that's what we're looking at here. Um, we're looking in this assignment at summer earnings and you can see that age, it appears that Older students earned more. They probably had more work experience because they're older. Uh, they've had that opportunity. Uh, some of them may be mature students that are only studying part-time and working full-time. So that's why their summer earnings are so much higher. Here's something that we saw in our data when we compared, you were looking at pivot tables. The summer earnings for international students were much less than Canadian students and where Nova Scotia students in particular. And so here we're seeing that, yeah, that's actually what we're seeing is that um, international students seem to be earning less than uh, domestic students or uh, Nova Scotia ones. We, I think, also found that those students in 2020, this last summer, this class, do seem to earn less during the summer than the class in 2019. So COVID probably affected employment. And again, that's why it's negative here, but it's very small. So the effect is, is tiny. So anyway, that's what, and so all I'm asking you to do is to go and put this in your assignment. How to do that? Um, I've said to do this, you know, we, we did screenshots before. I just said paste in the table. So we, what you could do is just go and copy this and copy it and go and paste it. So I could just go and boom, there's my table. I pasted it in. Um, if in your assignment 
two and was it in three as well. I can't remember, but in two you were copying uh, everything sort of on your screen. If that's what you did, um, this is what I realized when marking. So here, here was a screenshot, and students would go and take a screenshot. So I'll take a screenshot of this. And then they went into their assignment and they pasted it in. And when I went to market, <laughs> I had trouble reading this. It's so, so small. <laughs> okay. Um, and no, you wouldn't have the face in there. But, <laughs> but um, uh, if you're doing copying, and, and this is taking a picture of your screen, this doesn't really work very well. Um, oops. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Um, that's closing the whole thing. Um, let me just take this picture. Uh, alternate ways of doing this, um, and this I didn't know because I often would do screenshots like this. So let me let me actually do that back to that screenshot. When I first started doing these things, I pasted it in there, and I would. This is a picture. And in Word, I can edit a picture. So I'd go up here to Format, and I would crop it. And so this is what I do: is I just go and go boom, cut that out, cut that out, and oops, I got to go up a little bit. And I cut this stuff out, and then boom, there I am. And then I could make my picture bigger. You know, I could go and zoom and make it bigger. But the downside of doing this type of thing, and this I've seen other students doing the same type of thing and cropping it like I did because I didn't know any better. Um, and many of you know better than this. I'm just showing you what uh, a lot of these different things. We just don't know what we've got is. I could go back, and if this was in my Word document, and I could go back and crop it, hit crop again, and you'll see when I crop it, it doesn't throw this stuff away. It keeps it. You can see the ghosted image here that um, I could go back and, and pull up all this stuff. And if there was other stuff on my screen that I didn't want other people to see, they could go back and see it. So it's a privacy thing. Not a very good idea. Um, and they, so there are other ways of doing it, a bunch of different sorts of things that the, instead of doing a screenshot like that, if you just want to do it as a picture and this, it was one of the students, he was in the 1130 class, showed me this, you know, zoom meeting we had some time back and that's within uh, a PC, there is a program called uh, Snip and Sketch. And if you go and search on your computer, you should be able to find it, Snip, S-N-I-P. And on Macs, they have it as well. And there's shortcuts to get it. On a PC, I press my Window key, my Shift key, and an S. And it turns it all black. But then I go in here and I highlight what I want. And I just want that little table. It saves it to my clipboard as a picture. And then when I go back here and I go and paste it, it's a picture. Okay, I can't do anything to it because it's just a picture. But um, it saved it there and nothing else. Uh, and so there is a snipping tool in on Macs and there's a snipping tool on PCs and it just copies a picture for you, which is a really nice thing. That what's the difference between this picture and this table? This table, um, I can go in and edit. I could go and change my numbers. I, but see, there, here's a minus sign, minus this thing. It didn't do that very well. So I could make my table wider so I could do this. I could format it. I could color my table. Uh, I could change its layout. Um, design let me see what else i could do here i could make it i could make it pretty whatever way you want it 
there, I can do that to it. So as a table, I can do various types of formatting to it. But as a picture, I can't. So there's pluses and minuses with these different things. So let me go back to here, back to my data. And I'm asking you to do something here. Um, whoops, that's not the right file. This is the right file. Whoops, I've lost you. And where did I get my file again? Okay, so I want a scatter chart. And that I want age on the horizontal, summer on the vertical. And so I've been really nice to you here. Because if I go, I'm going to put age on the horizontal. It's the one we had the highest correlation with. Um, is it okay to copy and paste the data from Excel um, as a table? Yeah, you can go and copy and paste the table instead of the, um, just be careful at times. We'll go and copy and paste a chart in a minute. Um, that sometimes it does strange things with charts when you do a copy and paste if you change your chart in Excel. And we'll see if it does it to us today or doesn't. Um, it didn't with the 1130 class, but it's done it many times to me with pivot charts. Um, so I want to do um, a scatter chart. So I could go and I select and with charts, I've got to select my data first, and then I tell it what I want to do, um, sort of. Where are we here? So here's, oh, this is annoying. So that was age I wanted. And now I want to do summer earnings. Do, 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 do a little further here. Here we go. And I go up here to insert. Recommended charts. Good. It says a, a scatter chart, which is great. That's what I want. And click OK, and I get my chart. OK. Now, um, that a few things with this. If uh, this came up more in assignment three, but I just want to go back over that. Uh, let me just put some labels in here that in the assignment, I just said, just give me a chart. I didn't tell you to format it in any fashion. Generally, I'd recommend you format it. It's just as a habit, always to automatically do this and without being told. But I didn't tell you, so I'm not going to require that in grading. So I put age on the horizontal. And that does look like age, 0 to 60. OK. And I go over here to add a chart element. And on the vertical, I'm going to put summer earnings. Um, you can put a title in here, or you can remove the title or whatever if you put what title you want. With my chart here, I didn't like all the white space over on the left. And on the horizontal axis, if I've got a big bunch of white space, um, I'll often remove it. And so, what you do is you go down to your horizontal axis with the numbers here. So 0 to 60. I'd like to go maybe 15 to 60. So you click on that. Hit right click. It says Format Axis down at the bottom here. And it gives me something here. And it says I'm going from 0 to 60. I'm going to go 15 to 60. There. Now, it just... It makes better use of the real estate there. But, you know, I don't have any students that are 15 years old, let alone ones that are five years old or newborns. Um, and so here I get my scatter chart. OK, that um, and again, you can go and copy that. So I did a quick copy and I've got to watch how things work. Um, I'm an old guy. I was around with the first desktop computers and that sort of thing. They weren't graphical at all. Um, but 
Um, but when we did editing in word processors, it wasn't, everything we did was embedding control characters. We'd hit control something to do tasks and to do shortcuts. And so if I wanted to copy, I'd press control and C. And we still use that to this day. 40 years later, we're still using control C. And to paste something, we use control B. So I out of habit do that automatically. Okay. If I do it, what it does is gives me a chart that's actually linked back to my Excel spreadsheet. It's a chart that I can go in and uh, if I thought, oh, I still wanted to put that title in there, I want to put a chart title in up above here. And instead of it being summer earnings, it's that summer earnings. I'm just going to uh, say by age. I don't know what it is I'm trying to tell in the story. If, I've, if I'm trying to tell a story, I'd put it in there. But notice I can edit this thing. It's not a picture. So it's just like when I copied a table from the correlation table from Excel into Word, it still kept it as a table and I can edit it. Same thing happens, summary earnings. What am I doing? <laughs> Um, fix my typo that. So that's sort of nice that you can go and edit it in Excel. One of the problems though is that sometimes, and it doesn't consistently happen, if you go back into Excel and in here you went and decided to, um, let me, what did I last do? I last uh, moved it and I did this sort of thing, I changed this stuff around. Okay. And is it going to go and change it in Word? No, it didn't. But sometimes if you change it in Excel, because that was its source, it goes and links your, your chart. And so changes you make in Excel happen in your document. And sometimes you don't want that to happen. So there are other ways you can do things. I could go in here into Excel and I'll copy this again. So I did a copy. And in Word, when I go, so I'm not using my shortcut keys, I'm going to do a right click and do a proper paste. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's, there's all these different options in pasting. I never quite understand what's the difference among them. But these ones all link me back to my workbook. The last option is a picture. And as a picture, it's just a picture. Okay, I can't edit things. I can't change things. It says I can format, but this is formatting a picture. It's not formatting a chart. So if I now want, I would like to put the title in. I can't do it now. All right. Um, I can't do it the same way as what I did previously. Uh, so there are pluses and minuses, but it keeps my chart separate from my spreadsheet so that if I change the spreadsheet, it, I'm guaranteed it won't change my chart. Okay. Um, that uh, Just a caution on that. Comment on this thing. I could say, well, on my chart, Looking at this one, I've got a lot of blue here together. These are students that seem to be under age 25 and earning under $10,000. Seems to be where most of my students are. And then I've got a whole bunch over here. Uh, these guys almost look like outliers. They're really widely spread. Um, I'm going to have trouble fitting a line through this, I think. But we'll see. Um, th there's. Uh, I'm just looking for you to look at it and think about it. And different people may see different things in it. If you're commenting on the correlations, you might be saying, hmm, they all look pretty small. So that there is a strong relationships here. That, are we good? We okay? No one's asking questions at this stage. So now I ask you to fit a regression to this. Okay. So let me go back. Um, let's look at regression. 
progression, I've got to go back to data and data analysis and then regression. So these are leftovers from last class. Let me get them out of the way here. First thing is, where's the y variable, the one you want to predict? In the last class, I accidentally grabbed age as my first one, because it was just the first column. Um, no, it's summer earnings. So I can either type in, this is in column K1, and it goes up to column K number 180. And for the X, that's age. So it's in column F from the first row up to oops, 180. And I've got to make sure there's no blanks in here. And I didn't. I cleaned that up for you. I've got labels in here. Make sure you click labels or it'll give you an error because this is text and it can't do calculations with text. I'm going to put it in a new worksheet. I'm going to click off residuals. I just do this out of habit all the time, even when I don't use them, just in case I want to go back and look at them. Okay. So is it going to be happy? Good. Okay. We're in luck. So here's my results. Okay, this is stuff with residuals. I'm not going to use these right now. And so what I want in your assignment is just the table. And you don't need to give me all of the stuff over here because we don't use it. I don't really need the one in the middle. So you could, if you want to, just go and grab a bunch of these. Um, generally, I like to include the standard error of my coefficients. I go at least this far. Sometimes I'll go and click other ones. If you were in a stats course, they like the T stat and P value, but we don't use them in our class. So I could just go and copy these and paste them in. Or I can take a picture of it and paste it in. That's all you need to give me. I don't need the rest of it. So there I got it in. That um, if you look at it, it's got an R. Normally, we go and look at the first table and say, how did we do? Well, we got an R square of 0 0.10. Not very good. We'd like an R square that's up around, you know, 100%, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.5 even, but 0 0.1 is pretty low. Uh, so, but that's, if we look at the scatter plot we saw, it, was, it wasn't a strong pattern there that the standard error as well as it's huge it's saying that don't expect your forecast to be more accurate than, than five or six thousand dollars away from the right answer you can't give accurate forecasts and and we saw with the last couple values how widely spread they were no we can't forecast very well at all with this model that if we look down here um this tells me what my formula is going to be. And so hopefully you can see this on your screen. It's I'm saying summer earnings is equal to minus 3444.78 plus 445.90 times h. So that would be the regression formula. Uh, I don't use X's and Y's normally. I put in words because I can't remember what X is and what Y is. Those are just generic things. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is the equation of that line. If I was to look at my, where was that scatter chart? I think it was way down here. There it is. Let me look at So I can change layouts around and all that sort of thing. Let me just uh, make this guy bigger, though, so you can see him. Come on. Not letting me. I don't want to. doesn't want to work for me. Okay. Well, let me look at just showing you something here. 
I'm going to draw a line. I can. Yeah, my eyes are not very good. I'm missing here. There we go. And color for you. You know, can I make this chart bigger again? I don't want to do that. Can I make it go this way? That's strange. Doesn't want to allow me there. Let me go this way. Okay. Oops. There my line move though. Excuse me. Please bear with me. Okay, so that minus um, here was the regression line. Oh, this one's slightly different. I wonder why. Well, maybe I didn't select all, or I probably threw in some garbage data. Excuse me. That's what happened. Yeah. This chart got here. Excuse me. Was I ended up going down too far? Uh, can I? No. Okay. I can't fix it easily. I'm sorry. I actually messed my chart, or I messed it around a little bit, so these numbers aren't quite right. And. Uh, so don't read too much into this, that um, with a scatter chart, you can ask it to put a regression line through in one of the different layouts that you can get uh, for a scatter chart. And so this is the regression line we've got here. And as you notice, as I extend it all the way back, I get a negative. Not that we have any infants and newborns here that worked last summer, I hope. If they did, they had a negative income of minus four thousand okay. dollars. And this is the slope of that line. Now those numbers are incorrect, but this is just an equation of a line. In many instances, the intercept is a meaningless number. It's just something we need to draw the line. As you can see as well, this is the points are widely scattered around that line, especially up above. And that uh, I'm not going to get very good predictions. That's why my R square is so small and my standard error is huge. You know, this is twenty, thirty, forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars. So I, I had uh, big errors in terms of making predictions with this line. You know, here it says you expect the thirty-year-old to earn ten thousand dollars, and this person earned thirty thousand dollars. Not very good at good forecast, but um, so here's my equation. This is the correct numbers um, of what this is. And so I'm asking you explain what the 445.9 means. Anyone want to give me an explanation? What's the coefficient for A to represent? Come on, someone type something. Okay, good, Avery. No, nope. nope. Uh, was what the average earnings? Not really. It's the slope of a line. Always think of simple lines being like a simple cost function, because most of us can relate to cost functions. Remember, with a cost function, you would have total cost was equal to fixed cost plus unit cost times number of units. 
and you get that type of thing happening. And, and that's, that's a simple straight line function. So this is the intercept. Think of like being fixed cost. Uh, what's the fixed cost? It's if you're not making anything at all, you still incur costs because you've got to set things up to get started. And so it's a fixed cost that's separate from how many units you make. Whereas the slope of the line is the unit cost. For each additional unit I make, how much do my costs go up? So if my cost function had been um, equal to 500 plus 7.20x was my formula, I'd be saying that my fixed cost is 500. I need that to get started, sort of like my rent, my overhead, whatever. And then every unit that I make costs me $7.20 to make. Hopefully I sell them for more than that and I'm able to break even. Uh, but it's the cost per unit. So in this one, this is if the age goes up by one, how much do the average earnings go up? And so if I had imagined two groups of students, one of them is 18 years old in one group and one is 19 years old in the other group. What's the, if I look at the average earnings of the 18 year olds and the average earnings of the 19 year olds, I would say the difference on average, these are all average figures, is $445.90. That's how big a difference there is. So every year older you are, I should expect you earn $445.90 more on average. Some will earn more, some will earn less, but on average for each additional year, that it's sort of, you know, like how much does your pay go up? As you have more experience, as more experience, your pay goes up. So, that, uh, so that's what your slope is. You should always be looking at numbers and trying to think, what, what does it mean? Is it just a number? The intercept? Yeah, it's just a number. The slope generally means something. Anyway, so let's go down here. And okay, question two. I probably should have set you up slightly differently to get started. But let's go and start. I can do A easily enough. So let me go back here. Here we go. Okay. So in when I did the regression, I asked for residuals. Okay. So residuals are how much error there were would be in our forecasts. So that there's variation among what students earn during the summer. And part of it can be explained by their age. Older students earn more. Okay. So after I take that information out, you know, what's the impact of age? And I remove that from my model. I still have this leftover that I can't explain. This is the residual, the leftovers, the stuff that's at the bottom of your teacup. And that I'd like to look at a pattern of those. How, what sort of pattern is them? Is there in the residuals? So go and select the residuals. Okay. And go and insert. And I've asked you to make a box and whisker chart. So pick charts. And no, not one of those. Go to all charts. Go down here to box and whisker. And there I've got a chart. Okay. This suggests most students earned about the right, but, you know, 50% of them are in this range here. So it's very close to around the zero point. Uh, they didn't, um, adjusting for age, this is residual. This isn't how much they earned. This is how much, how far they were away from that line, the one that I had back here. So what's the gap between those points in the line? And as you can see, the ones below the line didn't go too far below, but the ones above the line went a long way away. Well, if I go here, these are the ones below the line. These are the ones above the line. The ones above the line got far above the line. You know, as much as $40,000 above the line. So this is the pattern of those residuals. Hmm. 
it uh, doesn't tell me an awful lot looking at it. Um, but what I'd like to know, in your assignment two, in your pivot tables, you looked at summer earnings and you, in your table, looked at two things. You looked at where they, where were the students from and were they in the class of 2019 or the class of 2020? So let's look at the students in terms of were they international or um, domestic students, okay? And um, how can I, because the international students might have all been much younger than the Canadian students, maybe. And we believe that older students earn more. You saw that Canadian students earned more than international students. Maybe it's because they're just older. Probably not, but that could be. Well, we've adjusted for age by looking at the residuals. So now if I looked at these residuals, how did they compare between domestic and international? So in the, so I just did this thing. Let me put my chart in there. And I'll put it in assignment here. in there okay and I didn't ask you to format so I'm not going to give you grief over that okay but I'm going to ask you and it may change it may not I put a warning in here because of Excel doing strange things sometimes with pasting that if I um, I asked you to select the values for international and I should have advise you to do one step before that because the international isn't in my data set here here's my residuals but it doesn't have international what i should have told you to do is this go i did tell you in another assignment each time you go and do something go and copy the data you need into a new sheet we did this in the regression assignment a lot. We just kept doing that over and over again. So I need the residuals. And I guess I'm gonna need some of the original data. So I'm gonna just go and take it all. Um, okay. Maybe I don't need all of it, but I'm just gonna grab it. And, I'll delete what I don't need. So I've got everything in here. This is sort of small for you to read. Okay. So let me go and do my chart again. Okay. So there was my chart. And now, Go up to, oh, well, I'm on the design tab. So when I'm in the chart, I get a design tab. If I go into the chart, it disappears. So if you can't see the design tab, it's because you're not in the chart. And I'm gonna go to select data. And I'm gonna go and look at the horizontal axis. I'm gonna go and say edit on that. And it asks, well, what do you want? Well, I'd like international. I'm not grabbing labels. Don't grab the label. Just grab the numbers because I, I don't have the option to go and click labels anymore. So I just click on the data itself. So I grab that, I click OK. And so it's got zeros and ones. Those are the values it's going to be using. Put it in. And here's my chart. So I've got a chart here where one is international students, zero is a domestic. It looks like international is somewhat lower than domestic. Um, that the, but I got a lot of outliers. And the outliers, 
are generally distracting. And uh, this has told me at least for, I didn't know if they were outliers for my scattered chart, but in a box and whisker, it's saying these ones are just so far away from most of your data that um, they're outliers. So click on the data or on the, 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 these things so you can see it's little dots and things are appearing. Then right click. And I know you probably can't see this, but it says at the very bottom of my screen, format data series, data series. If I was elsewhere in my chart, like over here, and I go to the bottom, it says format chart area. That's not what I want. I want to format the data series. So I have to be clicking on the data to be able to get this to come up. Data series. I get a little panel that comes up here and it has a thing, a checkbox that is checked off saying show outlier points. I don't want them. Take them out. And now I can see much more clearly international are much lower than domestic. That the box is, is definitely lower down. I'm not so concerned about the whiskers, but just looking at the two boxes, that's what my eye is most drawn to. Uh, there's a real difference between international and domestic. Okay. And so I've asked you to go and call this international equals one disk as a, a label to it. Um, really, we could have gone and uh, probably edited the horizontal axis and put it on that, um, put an axis title. But it, unfortunately, I can't sort of edit the one and make that international and edit the zero and make that domestic. Uh, those values I can't. That, so go and copy this. So I'll copy it and I'll paste it in. And um, then it's a little bit slow here. Go back to oh. So, oh, I put it in the wrong place. Okay. It's supposed to go in here. There we go. Oh, is he working here? Too many things running at once. Now, I could have done other types of comparisons. When you did your assignment before, we found the class of uh, 2020 earned less than 2019. So I could have gone back here into my spreadsheet and that I'm still in the design tab and select data. And here I can go and edit again. And I could say, I don't want international. Get up here to the top. I want to look at the class the students were in. Are they in this year's class or last year's class? Okay. It's already changed it on me. You can see, I don't know if you saw my picture jump, but it did. It changed. Okay. So, here I'm looking at, and I should change this up here to class 01, okay? Uh, and that, um, or actually, it's not that the variable is that, it's that the um, class of 2020 is equal to 1. So here's the class of 2020, and here's the the other class. So that's what I'm asking you then. And hopefully, copy this whole thing. And I go and I put it in here. There we go. And you'll see it's it's similar to the last one. Uh, but it's a little bit different. Um, uh, my warning about copying and pasting, I've 
done this type of thing before when making up solutions to your assignments. And Excel, and because of the linkage between Excel and Word, it went and changed my previous chart because I've gone and edited a chart. And this is really frustrating stuff. So that's why I warn you, you may want to just copy and paste as a picture. Awesome. Okay. okay. So um, I could ask you to do others, but this is more than enough. I just wanted to do that type of thing to it. And then I'm going to say, let's build a regression model. And so I've got to go back here. Um, and let me go back up to the top here. And I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to data analysis. I'm going to go to regression once again. I've got now, this is a different sheet of data, remember, because this is the one I did residuals in. Or I could go back to the original data set. Um, but if I'm working with this one at the moment, I'm going from columns in. 1 to N180, you could have gone back to the original data sheet, okay? That, uh, but now my X variables, I'm going to use age and international, and I was nice enough to put the two columns side by side, because Excel insists that the columns have to be together. I can't have age and class 01. I would have to copy them. If you recall from assignment three, you had to go copy them, put them in a new sheet, and do this again. Um, so uh, this is uh, I1 to I1, oops, up to J180. And I've got labels. Okay, I'm going to put it in a new worksheet. I asked for residuals, but we're not going to use them. Here we go. This looks right. All right, so my model is somewhat better than it was before. Remember, it had an R squared of 0 0.10, now it's 0.16, still small, but it's better. Standard error, still huge, 5,600. Um, and uh, this is the other parts of the table, and I asked you to put this sort of stuff in your. Um, Put this in your assignment. So, and what's this telling me now? It's now got a new model that says summer colors. Whoops. Just make this, you can see it, are equal to. Minus 1,794 plus 423.88 times age. So my intercept has changed a fair bit. Slope is similar, just not changed an awful lot. And then I've got minus 3271 times international. I'm going to ask you, can you explain what international means here? That you might want to say, well, uh, if you're Canadian, that means this new variable is equal to zero. So for a Canadian, you put a zero in there, you put a zero in here for international, and this is all going to be zero. I'm going to get. Uh, Summer dollars equals minus seventeen ninety four plus four twenty oops four twenty three point eight 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 and that's it. The other bit's not there because it's not an international student. What do you get if it's an international student? This is now equal to one.
94 still was there and the 423 that's still there what we put for the last bit anyone still there want to type it in Avery someone else <laughs> I only know you by these names that are here. Is there a person behind them? Anybody still there? Or did you all tune in? Ah, someone's typing. Matt, what would I put in for the last term? It's not rocket science, I hope. You're not certain. Yeah, okay. Just put one in there for age, and I get 3271 times one. So I'm gonna get minus 3271. And then if you do the math, I got a number and a number there. I'm gonna get uh, minus 5065. If my math is right, um, plus 423.888. It's like saying I've got two models. I've got a formula for summer earnings for Canadian students that's minus 1794 plus 423 times H. And for international students, their formula is minus 5065 plus 423 times H. The intercept that I've got for international students, if I was to graph these things, is $3,271 lower than for Canadian students. So looking at students of the same age, a 20-year-old international student, a 20-year-old Canadian student, on average, what's the difference in their summer earnings? $3,271. So this gives me a, a more concrete measure that takes into account age, as well as then measuring the difference between those two groups on average. Um, so those binary variables help us be able to determine uh, after adjusting for other factors, what's the role of being domestic versus international. I could have looked at um, putting in, if you're a class of 2020 versus class of 2019, what's the difference? In that one, if I add it into the model, it ends up being, it doesn't help us. It, it's um, after adjusting for age and international, it's hard to tell if there's a difference between this year's class and last year's class, because the two classes are slightly different in terms of age and in terms of domestic international mix that um, I think you noted that the proportion of international students is smaller this year and uh, that the um, you know maybe that has an impact on this sort of modeling of, of average salary anyway do you have questions about problem three this takes us to the end of regression are there issues about progression that I still haven't dealt with? Um, that um, So I've just talked about this piece. So I've given you just a table to go and do some basic probability calculations. So this should be, uh, what would that be? Class 17, day 17, Avery. The other class pointed out one thing I put in that was um, explanatory variables, that the explanatory variables are X. How do changes in age explain differences in summer earnings? How do changes in where you're from explain why your summer earnings may be different? So the X variables are uh, what are called your independent variables or explanatory variables. Y is the dependent one. It's the one we're trying to explain. 
another question. Uh, so if home was based upon age, but why the age? Um, I'm not sure about that. So um, that uh, it, it depends on what it is you're trying to explain. So uh, we may have variations in age by where students are from. And from one country tend to be younger or older than from other countries. And that is the case because of the way their secondary school system would work. Um, that, and so age and home may be interrelated, but if we're using home and age and what we're trying to predict is summer earnings, then both age and home would be explanatory variables. So it's what are you trying to predict? So on your formula, what's the why on your formula? So what you're trying to predict is your dependent variable. What you're using to predict are your explanatory variables. Okay, other questions? Oh, you got more. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, have you tried the probability? Um, just a caution that I confused some students. I used the data that came from assignment two, and I looked at frequency of depression and which class you were in. So that was stuff that you used in assignment two and I grouped it to get a smaller table, but it's still a very small sample. So if this was a frequency table and I was calculating probabilities from it, those probabilities, those relative frequencies would not be very accurate. So if I got an answer, uh, like in question A, it asks, um, what's the probabilities a student experiences frequent depression? And hopefully you figure that out to be 84 out of 246, or about 34%. Is it exactly 34%? Well, no, I'm only looking at 246 students. If I, was, if I took a different group of students, I'd probably get a different number. So it may be around 34%, but maybe it's 30%, maybe it's 40%. Um, there's, maybe it's down as low as 25%. It's a small sample. So I got a lot of error in it. I know it's not 80%, but 34%, I can't say is really accurate. Mind you, if I was looking at 246,000 students that I did in a national or international survey, um, then my percentage would be very accurate because it's based upon such a small, uh, big sample. So I want you to just work with this table um, but I shouldn't have put this number in and, and done that, that students didn't know what to use as their sample size. So just use this table here and work out probabilities like we did in uh, the day 17 class um, or in the, the first half of the chapter on probability. Okay. Any other questions or issues that you may have? Nobody's talking. If not, we're going to leave it there. And I will do today's stuff on Monday because it's not, won't take that long to cover it. I knew that. And the stuff I've got for Monday isn't going to be too long because I'm not going to drill down into um, the weeds of manually doing calculations. I think it's probably a bit of overkill uh, and it's very tedious. And Excel doesn't really lend itself to doing it. Uh, so I don't want to do too much that's manual. That, um, and uh, so it won't be an overly long class. I don't, well, it may be now because we're combining two classes. But um, I think I can do all the material in one. So we'll leave it there. Is that good? So, oh, our time's up. And got another meeting coming up. Okay. So I'm going to let you go. Get a bite to eat. Um, you have a good weekend. And remember, though, you've still got a quiz to do on uh, Saturday. 
and that quiz covers some of the stuff we were supposed to do today. So it's it's uh, the chapter 10, and he, um, he, I'll post the PowerPoint for today's class. Um, and uh, whether or not that helps you, I don't know. Anyway, you take care. Have a good weekend. And uh, bye now.